Simple. <laughs> Welcome to Smart Signature, a postpaid reimagined experience. Be worry free. Make the most of your Smart Signature plan with these inclusions data allocation that fits your digital lifestyle. It also comes with unlimited 5G on Signature Plans Plus, unlimited all-net calls, and unlimited all-net texts. Be in control and live the Signature lifestyle. Download the GigaLife app and easily manage your account. Check your usage, pay your bills, earn Giga Points, and redeem rewards and more. Next up, Learn more about your smart signature bill. Once your new billing statement becomes available, you will be notified through your registered and verified email address. This is a sample of the email showing your bill statement summary. This indicates the total amount that you need to pay, as well as your due date. To continue enjoying your postpaid inclusions, remember to settle your total bill on or before your due date. Get all the details of your bill in one place, the GigaLife app. In here, you can view and download a copy of your latest billing statements in just one tap. For inquiries, feel free to email us at signature at smart.com.ph. To learn more, you may visit smart.com. Sa pagtaas ng gastos, kahit nagtitipid, hindi pwedeng stop ang saya. Sa TNT Sulit Afford the Loads, gipit man, tuloy pa rin ang saya. Yes! May pantawid din para tuloy ang pag-connect sa araw-araw. Hello, Bri! Tutanggap ako! Surf sa'yo 20 para tuloy ang kulitan at only kwentuhan. At all data 50 para tuloy ang todo sayaw at saya. Tuloy ang saya sa TNT Sulit Afford the Loads. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat! Coming to you live mula sa Yoyogi National Stadium dito sa Shibuya District in the city of Tokyo in Japan. Ito ang uh, ikatlong araw, ang uh, final day or day three ng live and exclusive coverage ng Smart Sports ng inaugural edition ng ating World University Basketball Series or WUBS brought to you by Sun Chlorella. Again, we are on day three, coming to you live from the Yoyogi National Stadium in Shibuya, Tokyo, Japan. This is the sixth and final game of the first ever WUBS or World University Basketball Series. Nagpapanood nyo ang, itong, uh, ang ating stream na to. It's the official Smart Sports Facebook page and sa official Smart Sports YouTube channel. Ako nga pala si Enzo Floho at ako ang inyong magiging play-by-play -play and color commentator for this afternoon's final game of the WUBS. At, uh, at uh, ito rin ang ating uh, championship game dahil both of the teams that are going to face each other, as you can see here, no? Ateneo de Manila University going up against Tokai University of Japan. Ang home team dito, of course, ay ang Tokai University, ang Seagulls from Japan. This is the uh, bona fide championship game because both of these teams are undefeated entering this final day. Ateneo de Manila, as you can see, winning over Universitas Pelita Harapan by 86 points on day one and then rallying from behind last night against National Chongqi University uh, Griffins of Chinese Taipei to win 88-78. The home team, meanwhile, Tokyo University has also booked two double-digit wins. They beat NCCU 90-74 in that first game. And last night, they also had a big uh, double-digit win, 91-35, against the UPH Eagles from Indonesia. As we see the team standings right here. Toka University and Ateneo de Manila tied at the very top of the standings, 2-0 apiece, with four points each. 
Earlier today, nanalo na po ang National Chongqi University Griffins. They were able to beat uh, the UPH Eagles earlier this afternoon to uh, formally finish on the podium with a one-win, two-loss record for third place. And bringing up the rear is uh, the Indonesian champions, Universitas Pelita Harapa, the Eagles from UPH, unfortunately losing all three of their games. So as you can see, itong laban uh, ng Ateneo de Manila contra sa Toka University Seagulls ang ating championship game para sa pinakaunang WUBS or World University Basketball Series. Again, this is being brought to you by Smart Sports. Live and exclusive coverage on the official Smart Sports Facebook page and YouTube channel. At kita naman natin ang uh, final 12-man roster for this afternoon. Please remember that only 12 guys can play in each game. No? Now, Coach Tab Baldwin brought in 18 guys here for the Ateneo Blue Eagles. But right now, only uh, 12 of those 18 are dressed to play for the Blue Eagles in this championship game this afternoon. As we see some highlights from yesterday's big win by Ateneo over a very competitive NCCU Griffin squad. Kai Balungay hitting a couple of threes right here. He actually had three last night for the Ateneans. Kai Balungay top scoring for the Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles last night with 21.7 rebounds, two assists, and two steals. And you see him right there. That's number one. The guy you should watch for if you're an Ateneo fan. Kai Balungay standing six foot seven, a transferee from St. Stanislaus State in California. And now playing for the Ateneo Blue Eagles. As we see the final 12 man roster for Tokai University. The guy you guys have to watch here is number 24, Hiroki Matsuzaki. Now, Matsuzaki is their star player. He's been red hot in this tournament. Averaging 25.5 points, 4 rebounds, 5 three-pointers per game as well. As we see these highlights from uh, NCCU in their big win over UPH yesterday. All right. Now, UPH, of course, the champions of Indonesia. But they were pretty much no match against NCC as we see John Lawrence Harper Jr. getting the steal on the easy lip. He's one of the main guys to watch out for as well for NCC, you know, John Lawrence Harper Jr. averaging 4.5 points, 4 rebounds, 3.5 assists, and 2 steals per game so far here in the WUBS. Now, Harper is not related for the Titos like me, you know, he's not related to Derek Harper, he's not related to Ron Harper. For those of you who are keeping tabs on Batangilas, he is also not related to Jaden Harper. So John Lawrence Harper Jr. is uh, not related to those guys and he's seeking to make a name for himself in the Japanese basketball circuit as we will be uh, seeing our starting five in a bit. And we're going to uh, try and listen to the Coliseum announcer for the starting fives per team. Our referee is going to be lead by crew chief Yuki Kubo, followed by Yashisa Masubuchi and the second umpire is Terumasa Tojo. Now again, only 12 guys are dressed for today's game. The following guys will not play. Matthew Daves, Ange Kwame, Kyle Ong, Jacob Blau, Andrew Bongo, and Ina Fernilos are not going to play for Ateneo. He's a starting five. Not surprising. Kai Balunga is starting at forward. BJ Andrade, the veteran at guard. David Defonso at the other forward. Fortsky Padrigal, who's been averaging six assists per game, starting at the point guard spot for Ateneo. And manning the middle is going to be Gio Chu. Now, Gio has been doing quite well. As well for the Athenians so far in this tournament, Gio Chu averaging 8.5 averaging eight points, 11.5 rebounds, and 1 block per game. Although last night, he was saddled with foul trouble, and uh, we're hoping that 
He's not going to be saddled with foul trouble this afternoon against a very dangerous Tokai University Seagulls unit as we see the starting five now for Tokai University. Now, Tokai University is among the most successful teams in, the J in Japan's intercollegiate basketball circuit. They are six-time champions of the All Japan University Basketball Championship. And we see their starting unit right here. That's number 13, Ren Kanechka. Here's one of their top point guards, Ren Shimatani, who's averaging about five assists per game. One of their top shooters, Koyo Nishida, who's averaging 1.5 triples per game. And this is the star player for the Tokai Seagulls. This guy right here, number 24, Hiroki Matsuzaki, again averaging 25.5 points. Four boards and five triples per game so far. He was a member of the 2018 FIBA Under-18 Japanese national team that played in the FIBA Under-18 Asia tournament in Bangkok, Thailand. Manning the center spot for Toha University is going to be six foot seven Chinese center Zhang Zhenliang. Now remember. Japan is mostly composed of uh, Japanese players in this particular team, except for the center, number 10. He's actually listed as Cho Seiryo, but he was born in China, and his Chinese name is Zhang Zhenliang. And he's six foot seven, so far averaging seven and a half points, three rebounds per game. So that's going to be a key matchup to watch for this afternoon. The battle between our very own six foot ten, Jio Chu. I'm saying six foot ten because he's officially listed as two point zero eight meters, going up against six foot seven Zhang Zhenliang or Cho Seiryo of the Tokai Seagulls. We see Akira Rikukawa, who is uh, the head coach for the Tokai Seagulls. Again, both these teams entering this last game undefeated. 2-0, both of them winning their previous two games by double digits. Although the Athenians really had to go through the ringer. Medyo nahirapan ang mga Atenista kagabi against the NCCU Griffins from Chinese Taipei. Ateneo trailed by as many as 11 points in the second half before a huge... Explosion in the fourth quarter of that game against NCCU. Now remember, this tournament is a very short tournament. We started this past Tuesday. It's a three-day a three-day tournament. Each team plays three games in three days. Walang pahinga, no? and that's why uh, I think Coach Tab brought in around eighteen players, and he shuffled uh, his players. Some of the guys who played uh, in the first game did not play in the second game. And likewise, some of the guys who played last night are not playing this afternoon. And here's a tip. Tip one by Toka University. The Seagulls are in black and your Ateneo Blue Eagles are in white. This is their Chinese center right here, Cho Serio. Passing to their star player, Hiroki Matsuzaki. We'll see what they do. Matsuzaki is a dead shot from long range. Here he's 18-footer from top of the key over Gio Chu. And that's his move. Pull up Jay off the ball screen. Hiroki Matsuzaki standing only about six foot four. But you know, don't let his thighs fool you. He is a very good shooter. Sp speaking about very good offense. Great eye in the sky play right there for Kai Balungai. First two points for Kai Balungai. And he's been doing really well. For Atenea so far, Kai Balungay averaging around 15.5 points per game for Atenea. As we see, Fortsky Padrigao. Good pass inside. Gio Chu with a big slam, a gem off the big assist from his former Ateneo Blue Eaglet teammate, Fortsky Padrigao. And those two guys have been teammates ever since uh, Fortsky transferred to Ateneo back in 2017. From Adamson University, Gio meanwhile transferred to Ateneo from Pace Academy in Quezon City for senior high school. They were teammates in Batangila, so they really know each other very, very well. And a bad foul right there. Late closeout on the drive-in kick 
And the foul is going to be called on Dave Ildefonso. That could be a landing spot foul on Dave, but I'm not, I don't think he's going to be called for the unsportsmanlike. We are following FIBA rules right here. Hiroki Matsuzaki on the line for the front end of two charities. Now, Mitsuzaki has also played for Japan's youth team in the past. He was one of the star players for the Junior Akatsuki 5 under-18 squad in 2018 when they played in Bangkok, Thailand. And he's definitely the star player now for Tokai University. Actually, Tokai is not at full strength. They are missing their star point guard, Yuki Kawamura, who has, ha who has played for the men's national team and also plays professionally for the Yokohama B Corsairs in the Japanese B League. Likewise, Ateneo is also not at full strength, of course. Ansh Kwame and Matthew Daves not playing because of injury. Neither has played a single game in this tournament, actually. Great umbrella defense. Na payungan si Balungay nun. And here comes Nishida. There you go. That is Koyo Nishida, first two points. And uh, Ateneo had problems with their transition defense last night. Many times, especially during the first half, they were caught napping. And NCCU had a few easy shots in transition. We'll see if they're going to be able to rectify that today. And here's a loose ball foul called on Ren Kanechika. As he was trying to box out Kayo Balunga. And now this Tokai Sigo squad is not a very big unit. Their tallest guy is uh, number 10, uh, Zhang Zhen Liang at 6'7". After him, they have a couple of six foot five and six foot four guys, but definitely in terms of size, Ateneo will have the edge here against Toha University. Good offensive rebound right there by David Defonso. Ateneo has been the top rebounding team in the WUBS as we see David Defonso with his first three point shot of this game. David Defonso drilling his first three. He's been doing well for Ateneo, averaging 14 points. 11 rebounds. Well, he's only played one game so far anyway. He hit two triples last night against NCCU. And I'm sure Ateneo fans are hoping Ildefonso can uh, shoot even better tonight against uh, Toha University. So they, so they can bring home the bacon, so to speak, in the first ever WUBS. Picked up by Matsuzaki off a of Padrigal miss. Good defense right there by Dave Ildefonso. By Konting Hata was Matsuzaki brought the ball up and under. Good timing on the swipe by Dave Ildefonso. And the ball coming off the toe, I think, of Matsuzaki in that sequence. So Ateneo gets possession right here. Oh, bad pass by Jiu Chu. And that was one negative thing for Ateneo yesterday. They were very turnover prone. But speaking of turnovers, here's Fortsky Padrigal forcing a turnover. On Toha University, that's uh, Koyo Nishida is going to be called for the illegal screen. And a little bit of gamesmanship may counting discarded si Fortsky in that sequence. So Fortsky, of course, one of the craftiest young point guards we have in the Philippines right now. And uh, we'll see how he contends against the pressure defense of Toha University. Gio so showing some ball handling skills. Here's David Ildefonso, two-man game with Gio Chu. Gio bottled up, goes for the reverse. No good, great interior defense by the Seagulls. But a bad pass by Nishida. Big steal here coming from BJ Andrade. Fortsky from three. I think he grazed the backboard in that sequence yesterday. He had an interesting looking bank three off the top of the key. This time he grazes the backboard but makes a three. Doesn't matter if you hit the backboard or not. A three is a three, and Coach Tab will take it. Ateneo on top by three with six minutes and change to go in the first quarter. Tokai miss, but a rebound right there from Nishida. And a loose ball foul going to be called on Dave Ildefonso. With a relatively good uh, start in terms of shooting for Ateneo right here. Last night, they didn't start very well from the outside as we see Tayo Motoda enter the basketball game. Motoda coming off the bench, but he's one of the top players for this Japanese team. He played in the 
2021 FIBA Under-19 Basketball World Cup, actually. So he's one guy to watch as we see that uh, three-pointer from Ren Kanechika tying the ball game up at 10 all. So perimeter defense is going to be important for Ateneo here. Yesterday, especially in the first half, they allowed around six threes from Chinese Taipei. So Coach Tab definitely reminding his wards to make sure that their perimeter defense is going to be tight against this Japanese squad. Cho Seirio, 10 footer is no good. Back rims it, picked up by Ildefonso. Ildefonso still not passing it. Fade away, not going anywhere. Maybe not the best run transition sequence from Dave Ildefonso right there. And he's going to be replaced right now by Sean Kitevis. Kitevis, one of the heroes last night for the Ateneo Blue Eagles as they beat NCCU. He had only two points, but he did have five rebounds, two assists, two steals, and one block. Talking about Sean Kitevis, who is, I think, in his fourth year already in Ateneo. Spent much of the first three years in Team Glory B after... Uh, Coming in from Pat of Springdale in Cebu. Padrigal passing it off. Here's Chris Kuhn. And Chris Kuhn had a good first game against the UPH Eagles. Turns it over there. He had a bad game last night, though, against Chinese Taipei. Finishing with a big fat egg. Zero points. And he only took one field goal attempt last night. He finished with zero points, one rebound, one turnover, and one foul. Talking about Chris Kuhn. Now, Kuhn, of course was a vital cog for Ateneo in Season 84, and he will continue to be a vital cog for sure for Coach Tab Baldwin in Season 85, but we'll see if he can get any rhythm in this uh, third game of Ateneo in the WUBS. Good closeout by Fortsky. Miss on the three by the Black Shirts, picked up by Gio Chu. Here's Kitevis in the break. Gio with a handoff, or looking for the handoff on Kuhn. Good aggressive defense right now by Tokai at the perimeter. Chris Kuhn. Here's Balungai. He's going to shoot over the Tokai defense. No good. And picked up right there by Tokai University once again. And here's number seven, Kantameno. Off to Kotetsu Kurokawa. Blowing by the defense of Kai Balungai. Napakadali naman on. And Kurokawa with a simple hezi, blowing by the defense of Kai Balunga in that sequence, giving Japan the lead. And after starting uh, relatively hot, the Athenians have cooled off in their last handful of offensive trips. And we culminate with that last touch by Kai Balunga. Out of bounds called an Ateneo. Japan retains possession, or will get possession rather. As a timeout is called, I believe, by Ateneo right here, Coach Tab Baldwin. Having some choice words for his starting point guard, Fortsky Patrigao Ateneo, leading uh, in the first few minutes before the Tokai University Seagulls unleashed a 5 0 mini run to retake the lead. As we see Hiroki Matsuzaki here, first bucket of the game off that ball screen, top of the key, nothing but net for the six foot four forward from Japan. And here we have that three-pointer from Ren Kanichika, top of the key as well. So that perimeter defense has been punished by Toha University in the same way that the uh, National Chungchi University Griffins punished our perimeter defense yesterday early in the first half. And we'll see what kind of adjustments Coach Tab Baldwin will have his wards make here. So far, the leading scorers for Ateneo have been David Defonso and Fortsky Patrigao, each with three points. Gio Chu and Kai Balungai, meanwhile, each with two points. Again, you're watching the WBS. This is the sixth and final game of this tournament. We're coming to you live from the Yoyogi National Stadium in the Shibuya District of Tokyo, Japan, the capital city of Japan, and one of the more famous districts in Japan, of course, famous for, for, famous for the Shibuya Crossing. But right now, most of the attention is being uh, put on this game between the Tokyo University Seagulls and the Ateneo Blue Eagles. Good 
Shot block right there. Protecting the rim was Josh Lazaro. Who enters the game for the first time. Lazaro played in the first game against Indonesia. But was uh, not dressed last night against NCCU. So he should be fresh tonight against the Tokai University Seagulls squad. Once again, my name is Enzo Floa. I am your play-by-play -play commentator for uh, this afternoon's festivities. And we are coming to you live. You're catching this stream on the Smart Sports official Facebook page and YouTube channel. What a bad miss right there by Tokai University. And you see Coach Tab is just livid on the sidelines. Both of his big men, Josh Lazaro and... Joseph Obasa had nobody boxing them out, but they could not get the rebound as we see one of the Spitfire guards, John Lawrence Harper Jr., coming in now for the Tokai University Seagulls. John Lawrence Harper Jr. is uh, one of the top playmakers and top defenders for this Tokai University squad, and we'll see what he can bring to the floor. A good pass right there. Just a missed shot by Kotetsu Kurokawa of the... Pass by uh, Harper. Here comes Chris Kuhn. Two-man game with Obasa. Top of the key three is short. Picked up by Josh Lazaro. Kitev is inside. Lazaro, dunker spot. Inside to the cutting. Obasa! And Obasa just barreling down the lane. Great pass. Great look by Josh Lazaro. Obasa last night, of course, had a very good game. Here's a good cut by Obasa. Wide open lane right there. and Definitely... Coach Akira Rikokawa not going to be happy with the interior defense shown by Toka University in that sequence. This guy right here, the new foreign student athlete for Ateneo, coming from Nigeria, 6'11", Joseph Obasa with the bonus free throw. No good there. Last night, he had a pretty good game. And so far, entering this game, Obasa averaging 14.5 points, 12 rebounds, and a block and a half per contest. So he has filled in really well in the absence of Ange Kwame, who is, of course, still nursing his injury. Kwame is actually with the team here in Tokyo, but he has not played a single game and will not play in this one. Taichi Kodama with a nice pull-up J there to give Japan the lead again. 14-12. to 12. And The Japanese have been really living and dying with their uh, long-range and mid-range games so far against Ateneo. Ateneo, of course, has the edge in size, but so far, Japan... Having the edge in perimeter shooting. Kitavis in the repossession. Driving into traffic. Wild shot from Sean Kitavis. And the execution has been inconsistent and uneven so far for Ateneo. Good tight defense on the sidelines right there by Toka University. And you don't really know what uh, Kitavis was trying to do in that sequence. The shot clock running down. Harper running into some pressure of his own good pass inside. And that is Taichi Kodama slipping into the lane, getting fouled. I believe the foul will be on Paul Garcia. That's number one on Paul Garcia. As he was late on the help defense. And it was uh, Kodama able to find that open space down there in the paint. Now, one of the chinks in this Ateneo team's armor is fouls. Last night, they had several guys in foul trouble, and they've been giving up a lot of free throw attempts, to be quite honest, against their opponents. And Ateneo themselves have not been shooting the free throw well. They've only shot 23 out of 40 across two games, as Kodama makes good on both his free throws. Japan now up by four, their biggest lead so far in this game. Now, as I was saying, Ateneo shooting only 57.5% from the free throw line in this tournament so that's been uh, one big area for improvement but speaking of shooting josh lazaro hitting from the free throw line but that's going to be worth two points 15 foot pull-up jumper for josh lazaro cut that deficit down to two points in favor of the toka university seagulls this is a winner take all matchup between these two undefeated teams toka entering this game 2-0 likewise for ateneo Pull-up jumper from Kurokawa goes nowhere, but John Lawrence Harper Jr. just outworking 
the bigs of Ateneo to get an offensive rebound. Harper working on the defense of Sean Ketevis. Good rejection there by Obasa. Here comes Paul Garcia in the break. They're looking inside for Obasa, but it's too crowded. Good defense being shown by Toha University. Kitevis. Here comes Kuhn on the baseline. One fake. One-handed shot is no good. Rebound falls to Nishida. And that's going to be a foul on Atene. I believe that's going to be on Sean Kitevis right there. He fouls Yosei Nishida. Now, for all the FIBA fans right there, you'll be delighted to know that the star, one of the star players of the men's national team, Yudai Nishida, has not one but two siblings playing tonight for the Tokai University Seagulls. That's number 18, Yosei Nishida, who's one of their top three-point shooters. And the other one is number 16, Koyo Nishida. As we end the first quarter, Toha University retains the lead 16 14. It was a good start for Ateneo. They were leading 10 7 after about the first five minutes of the first quarter. But their shooting uh, went off the deep end after the first five minutes. And Toha University put a lot of pressure on both ends of the floor. And now Toha University leading by two points 16 to 14 so far against the Ateneans. And so far, we have six different players scoring for uh, the Athenians right now. Gio Chu, David Defonso, Josh Lazaro, Fortsky Padrigao, Kai Balunga, and Joseph Obasa. All scoring for Ateneo. I have to apologize to everyone, though. We don't have any live stats available for us so uh we're hoping that the by half time we'll be able to get a clearer picture of uh, how both teams are doing in terms of their team stats and player stats as well so far the leading scores for Atene have been David Defonso and Fortsky Patriga with three points each and Gio Chu, Josh Lazaro, Kai Balunga and Joseph Obasa each with two points but the offense has stagnated a little bit for Ateneo after the first five minutes of the first quarter the defense of Toka University really tightening up and even if Toka University is giving up a lot of inches like I said earlier their tallest guy is number 10 uh, Cho Serio or Zhang uh, Zhang Zhenliang he's not even on the floor Toka University has been able to hold their own in terms of defense and rebounding and right now, the, the tallest guy for Toka University, I think, is uh, is number uh, seven right now. That Kan Tamaeno, who's their tallest guy so far, starting at six foot five. Going up against Josh Lazaro, who's about six foot four. And Joseph Obaza, who's definitely around six foot eleven. Here's Paul Garcia now, Chris Kuhn. Off the double screen, pull up three from the wing, no good. Good rebound by Obasa, no good on the putback, but that's the size and the space being created by that size, featuring six foot eleven Nigerian foreign student athlete Joseph Obasa. And Obasa again last night had a man's game for Ateneo, seventeen point and fifteen rebounds to go along with three blocked shots last night. Joseph Obasa was a bona fide tower of power for the Athenians since as they won uh, or rallied from behind to win against NCCU for their second win last night. So far today, though, he's not done well from the line. I think that's his second miss already from the stripe, talking about Joseph Obasa. So that's definitely going to be in the list of things that he needs to work on. After this game, when they go back to the Philippines as they prepare for season 85, Obasa missing both charities and he's 0 for 3 already this afternoon. Obasa will likely not see action for Ateneo in season 85 because Ansh Kwam is expected to play for Ateneo and Obasa probably will have to wait one more season before he sees action next year 
in season 86 as we see JC Fitalvero battle against Teichi Kodama on the floor. That will probably earn Fitalvero some hustle points with the coaching staff as we see this nice pass from John Lawrence Harper. But Kodama bobbling the pass, unable to handle it well. And Fitalvero hustling to get that loose ball instead. Possession will be retained by the Seagulls, however, as we see some guys coming in now for Tokai University. Kantameeno is in as the big guy for uh, Tokai, but he stands only about six foot five. Good blob or baseline out of bounds play right there to get uh, Koya Nishida open. But Nishida bobbles the basketball and uh, is not able to handle it out of bounds. Possession goes and swings to Ateneo. Here comes Paul Garcia. Paul Garcia, a new face for Ateneo. He's actually in the graduate school already. And he has two seasons of eligibility for Ateneo coming out of Salisbury University in Maryland. As we see, a sweet turnaround fadeaway from six foot seven Kai Balungay. That's only uh, the second shot for Balungay so far. He top scored last time with 21 points for Ateneo. But Kai Balungay has shown a lot of versatility so far for Ateneo. Definitely, he's one of the most athletic guys on this squad. But he's been showing some uh, good touches from both long range and mid range as well. And here comes Toka University. Kanechika, no good on that shot. But Obasa, Butterfingers. Cannot handle the defensive rebound. Fetalvero again hustling for the loose ball. Trying to save that basketball. But, but last touch on Ateneo. So uh, Toka University's hustle will be rewarded. They will retain possession right there. And so far, Obasa has been able to bully smaller guys in the paint. But one other thing for him to improve, aside from his free throw shooting, has been his handles. So that's something he should really work on before he officially sees action for Ateneo at, in the UAAP level. Probably next year in Season 86. So we have a tied game right here. You are watching uh, this game between the Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles and Tokai University as we see Zhang Zhen Liang enter the game for Tokai University. So if Ateneo has... A Nigerian foreign student athlete. Tokai has a Chinese foreign student athlete in six foot seven Zhang Zhenyang. He's in uh, the black jersey, number 10, guarding Obasa in the paint. And here's that matchup Obasa, shoulder fake on the low post, no good. His version of the dream shake. Padrigao off the repossession by Ateneo. Two man game, but he rejects it and goes for the turnaround fadeaway instead. Portsky Padrigao, that's his second shot of the game, leading uh, the Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles with five points right now. Ateneo with the lead, 18 16. Japan still scoreless so far in the second quarter. And very nearly a steal right there by Chris Kuhn. And a weird sequence right there for Japan. And I think uh, Renshi Matani thought. But Ateneo had the last touch. He just let the ball roll out of the sidelines. But Ateneo will get possession of that basketball. Basketball seemed like a hot potato in that sequence. No one wanted to get it. But credit Chris Kuhn for the hustle on the deflection. As uh, Tokai University tried to make that interior pass. Resulting in that turnover for Tokai and possession for the Ateneans. Good defense right now being shown by Shimatani on Padrigao. Padrigao asking for the ball screen. Up top. Rescreen from Obasa. Swings it to Ildefonso. Goes down the middle. No good. And that's a shot clock violation for Dave Ildefonso and the Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles. Really aggressive, high pressure, tight defense, especially on the perimeter, being shown by Toha University right here. And it's been it's been very bothersome. For Ateneo's guards and wingmen. And so far, even with Ateneo having a slim two-point lead, the Ateneans just haven't really been able to get into any sort of rhythm 
right here at the Yoyogi National Stadium in Shibuya, Tokyo, Japan. Matsuzaki, their leading scorer. And here's a foul called. This will be on BJ Andrade. BJ Andrade choosing to follow Matsuzaki at the top of the screen. The screen being given by Zhang Zhenliang. And medyo may konting hawak si Zhang Zhenliang. Di nakita ng referee, no? Zhang Zhenliang's right hand holding on to BJ Andrade as BJ Andrade went above the screen to follow Matsuzaki. But Andrade will have to live with that break of the game. And here comes Japan again. And that's the second foul on Ildefonso off a jumper. That's going to be Ren Kanechika with that pull-up J. Remember in that first quarter, Ildefonso caught on the late closeout against Matsuzaki. And this time around, Ildefonso allowing Kanechika to blow by him from the top of the key. Recovering late on defense. Caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Being called for his second foul. As Ren Kanechika now trooping to the line. For two free throws. Making good on the first. Now this Japanese squad has been very good from the free throw line. Entering this game, they were shooting 86.4% from the stripe. So if Ateneo keeps on fouling these Japanese shooters, it's definitely going to be bad news for Coach Tab Baldwin and the Blue Eagles. Pinachika's second free throw. Rattles out, picked up by Gio Chu. We'll see how the Athenians respond here. Spin move from Padrigao going straight at the basket. No foul called, but a foul called on Josh Lazaro in transition. As he was trying to steal the basketball in transition as the Toka University Seagulls were going for the primary break. Here he is tapping the basketball from behind. I'm not sure where the foul was, to be quite honest. Ateneo still not in the penalty, but their next foul will mean free throws for Tokai University. And here comes Shimatani. Shimatani, pull up Jay, no good. Picked up here by Josh Lazaro. Lazaro in transition. Looking for his point guard. Here's Kitevis. Off to Padrigao. Lazaro and Padrigao, former teammates for the Blue Eagles Juniors team, as was Gio Chu. Good backdoor pass. Good pocket pass from Kitevis and Josh Lazaro with a nice acrobatic reverse layup right there. That's his second shot of the basketball game. Josh Lazaro now with four points. It's Toka University with a miss on the other end. Padrigao kicks it out. Balungay from the corner. No good. Could have been a foul. But no foul call and could have been a foul there. Finally a foul call on Toka University as Josh Lazaro gets the offensive board and gets bottled up by Hiroki Matsuzaki down low. And Toka University is not yet in the penalty. So this will be a sideline throw in for Ateneo. But you got to love the hustle being shown by Josh Lazaro. Josh Lazaro, of course, like Padrigao and Gio Chu, a product of the Batangilas program coming to Ateneo in grade 11 by way of San Beda. Padrigao now looking for a friend. Kitev is lifting beyond the arc. Back to Padrigao. Open three for Fortsky. No good. And picked up here by Kanichika. And here come the Seagulls on the break. And being called for steps. That's going to be Nishida. Koyo Nishida being called for steps there in transition. Good call by the referee. As we see the pass for Matsuzaki. And I think uh, Nishida took two steps before the first dribble in that motion, which prompted the traveling call from the referee. Two-man game, top of the key between Padrigao and Lazaro. Ops to go to Gio Chu. Gio Chu, mid post. Gets the ball again, working on Zhang Zhenliang. Jiu Chu slips and travels. Good defense right there, but the smaller Zhang Zhenliang and uh, Jiu Chu a little tentative on offense. Look at that left pivot foot as he slips right there, and the referees will call that. And yet another turnover on Ateneo, but Co Coach Tap Baldwin does not agree with the call at all. But Jiu Chu did uh, slip a little bit with that pivot foot. 
prompting the traveling call. Here's Matsuzaki again. Good challenge by Chu, but he's going to be called for the foul. I think that's going to be the second personal on Gio. Fifth team foul now for Ateneo. Well, a correction. Uh, I stand corrected. Rather, that's the first personal first personal foul on Gio Chu, but that is the fifth team foul now on Ateneo. Matsuzaki is the top scorer for this Tokai Sigo squad entering this game. He was averaging 25 and a half points per game. Definitely does not have 25 yet for Tokai, but he has been one of the main points of attack for the Sigo squad this afternoon. Second free throw rattles out for Matsuzaki. Defensive board colored by Josh Lazaro. Atenean still on top, but only by two points. Tokai has been very aggressive. Good pocket pass on the back cut by Kai Balungay. Misses the layup, though. And here comes Josh Lazaro fighting for the rebound, but stolen by Tokai University. Kanechika. And here comes number 15, Shimatani. No good on the three. Gia Chu picks up the defensive rebound, and here comes Kitevis in transition. And that's going to be a foul on Kanechika. That will be the third team foul now on Tokai University, if I'm not mistaken. So still not in the penalty as we see Paul Garcia enter the ball game. Paul Garcia has been one of the bright spots for Ateneo in their first two games in this tournament, averaging 14.5 points, three rebounds, and three three-pointers per game. That's number zero, Paul Garcia, one of the new names that Ateneo and UAP fans will have to be familiar with in the coming uh, 85th season of the UAP. As we see a steal here by Toka University. Toka in transition. Nishida missing the wide open layup. But here comes Kanechika on the putback. Nobody boxing out. Ren uh, Kanechika in that uh, particular sequence. Tying the game up at 20 all. And those turnovers have been uh, hampering the Blue Eagles once again. Entering this game, Ateneo actually averaging 22 turnovers across two games. So that's certainly... One of the main uh, weaknesses of this Ateneo squad. But what they're good at is drawing fouls. And they draw another foul right there. That is the fourth team foul on Tokai University. That's going to be on uh, Hiroki Matsuzaki. And I believe that's already the second foul on Matsuzaki. But I think that's supposed to be a shooting foul. As we see Filipino-Italian shooter Gab Gomez enter the ball game now for the Ateneans. Josh Lazaro giving a good account of himself so far. Four points right now for Josh Lazaro. All of them in the second quarter. As we see Paul Garcia on the line for two. Paul Garcia, product of Salisbury University from Maryland. Born and raised in the States. But he is a two and through player for Ateneo. Eligible to play two seasons for the Blue Eagles. Misses the first off his free throws. Last night, he had 12 points on three triples to go along with six rebounds and one assist. Talking about Paul Garcia. But he did also turn the ball over three times last night. So that's going to be uh, something to look at for Ateneo. In fact, Ateneo had 18 turnovers last night against NCCU. Philippines on top by one. Under four minutes to go in the first half of this game. The winner of this game will be declared the first ever WUBS champion. World University Basketball Series brought to you by Sun Clarella and Smart Sports. As we see the star player for Japan, Hiroki Matsuzaki, hitting his uh, first three of the ball game. This guy averages five three-pointers per game. That's three-pointer number one. Good pass right there by Gomez inside to Gio Chu. Good pocket pass by, or drop pass rather, from Gab Gomez to Gio Chu who finishes in the paint. Four points now for Gio, 23 for the Philippines, and they've been able to tie the game against Tokai University. Good defense by Ateneo. Kitev is in transition. Looking for Gab Gomez. Handoff on Gomez. Two-man game. Nope. Ops to go to Kitevis. Back to Gomez. Top of the key. Passes it on to Garcia from the wing. No good. Short arms to three. And picked up here by uh, Zhang Zhan Liang. And here, come to here comes Tokai University in transition. 
Matsuzaki again this time. No good. Rebound goes back to Matsuzaki. No one boxing him out. Good defense by Chiu Chiu. I think he might have fouled Matsuzaki, but no call by the referee in that sequence. Bad pass by Kitevis. Buti na lang, hindi naging turnover yun, no? And here's a foul. That's going to be a number 15. Ren Shimatani, if I'm not mistaken. That is team foul number 5 on Toka University. So that should mean free throws already for Sean Kitevis. And Shimatani being called with... Uh, Extending his uh, gluteus maximus in that sequence. As Toka University enters the penalty. And after this timeout, we should see Kitevis trip to the line for two free throws. Again, you are watching Game 6 on Day 3 of the World University Basketball Series. Coming to you live from the Yoyogi National Stadium here in the Shibuya District in Tokyo, Japan. This is being brought to you by uh, Smart Sports, live and exclusive coverage, which you can catch only on the Smart Sports official Facebook page and YouTube channel. This is once again Enzo Floho, your play-by-play -play and color commentator for this afternoon. Now, for those of you who are just watching, this WUBS or World University Basketball Series, ito ay isang bagong event na gustong spotlight ang university basketball in this region of the world, in particular the East Asia and Southeast Asian region of the world. Ito ang pinakaunang edition ng WUBS featuring four teams from Japan, the Philippines, Chinese Taipei, and Indonesia. Earlier today, Chinese Taipei's National Chongqi University had an easy win over uh, the University uh, Rositas Harapan of Indonesia. National Chongqi University finishing third place in the tournament with one win and two losses. UPH finishing winless after three games. Now, both of these teams we're seeing on the floor right now, Toka University and Ateneo de Manila, both undefeated entering this game, which means the winner of this game will be declared the champion. So, wala na tayong playoffs, wala na final four, wala twice to beat. Ang team na may pinakamagandang record after the round robin will be declared the champions. As we see Sean Kitevis hitting the first of his free throws from the line. First points coming in for Sean Kitevis. Misses his second free throw. Ateneo on top by one point with 2 minutes and 21 to go in the first half. Now Japan has been scoring well from the mid-range and from the perimeter. Exposing the perimeter defense of Ateneo so far. Ateneo showing matchup defense. Almost a uh, nice looking reverse layup right there from Yosei Nishida. Good pass actually coming from his teammate. He just could not finish under the basket. Two man game between Gomez and Chu. Pocket pass to Gio Chu. One fake, two fakes. Up and under. Right hand shot, no good, but he gets his own miss. Gio Chu. Napakasipag ni Chu. And he is rewarded with two points. Six points now for Gio Chu to lead all scorers from the Ateneo side. Ateneo on top, 26-23. Here's a good steal from Kitevis. Kitevis, sidestep, pass it to Garcia. Good, the sequence right there by Sean Kitevis and Paul Garcia. Giving Ateneo a five-point lead, 20-23. to Timeout Japan. One minute and 23 seconds to go in the first half of this game between the Tokai University Seagulls and the Ateneo Blue Eagles as we see that bad pass coming from uh, Kotetsu Kurokawa. Telegraphed well by Kitevis and a good pass right there to Garcia on that 2-1-1 break. So Ateneo leads 28-23 to and we'll see how Tokai University adjusts here after that sequence. Gio Chu with a nice uh, put-back layup after his own miss. And Paul Garcia off a drop pass from Sean Kitevis. Getting his first field goal of the game to give Ateneo a five-point lead so far. Garcia now with three points by my own count. 
Again, apologies to everyone. My manual count of the scoring is due to the fact we don't have any live stats available for this game. But by my count, if my math is correct, and uh, I hope my grade school and high school math teachers are not watching, but by my count, Gio Chu leads all scorers from Antonio with six points, followed by Fortsky Padriga with five points. Josh Lazaro and Kai Balunga each with four. David Defonso and De Paul Garcia with three points. Joseph Obasa with two points. And Kitevi so far with a single point for Ateneo. Ateneo showing a soft uh, full court press right there. Easily broken by Toka University. Matchup zone now in the half court. Being shown by the Blue Eagles. Here comes Kurokawa. Good pass right there and a good three. That was Tayo Motoda. Southpaw shooter number one. Tayo Motoda with a three. Cut that lead down to two points. And that perimeter defense really has been tested so far by Toka University. Could have been a double dribble right there on Gab Gomez. Bad pass. But a bad pass on the other end as well. And the sky play goes nowhere between Gio Chu and Josh Lazaro. Gio Chu says he was pushed. But the referee disagrees. No foul call. And Gio Chu's layup hits uh, the underside of the backboard. Bad pass by Gomez. Recovered by Lazaro. Eye in the sky play. Goes nowhere. He's Gio. Says he was fouled. And he may, have a, he may actually have a good case right there. But no foul called by the referees. And here comes Toka University again. Rejecting the handoff. Here comes Kurokawa from long range. Short arms to shot. Rebound goes to Gab Gomez off a tip from Gio Chu. Gomez to JC Fidalbero. Specialty of the house. No good for JC. Picked up right now by Toka University. 13, 11 seconds to go. Shot clock is turned off. And Toka University will take the last shot of the first half. A chance to tie the game or maybe even take the lead against Ateneo right here. Toyo Motoda, no good. Uh, Taichi Kodama, rather, no good on that turnaround jumper. As Ateneo takes a 28 to 26 lead into the halftime break. Ateneo outscoring Toha University 14 10 in the second quarter, but for sure we have a pretty good game going here at the Yoyogi National Stadium in Shibuya, Tokyo, Japan. Ateneo so far leading. The Tokai University Seagulls 28 to 26. Thanks to six points from Gio Chu to lead the way. For Tsuki Padriga with five points. Josh Lazaro and Kai Balunga each with four, four points so far for the Blue Eagles. But the Tokai University Seagulls have been within striking distance thanks to the uh, hot hand of number 24 star player Hiroki Matsuzaki. We'll go back to you as we turn it over now to the Yoyogi National Stadium for the halftime performance. Feeling powerless with limited choices? Not anymore. Because with Smart's new power, All 99, I have the power to do what I want. With 8 gigabytes for all sites and apps, I have the power to play, to watch, to share, to stream, everything. Plus, Unlitech Talk gives me the power to stay on my FYP. And Unlitech's power to stay in touch. All that power for just 99 pesos. So it's Smart's new power, All 99, for the power to do what you want. Best choice I made. Load now. The magic of Apple Music gives you spatial audio. Sound all around that brings out the excitement from lively percussions. Love in romantic guitars. 
loneliness of crying violins. Courage of beating drums. Surround yourself with music through spatial audio. Brought to you by Apple Music and its over 90 million songs. And Smart, the Philippines' fastest 5G network. <laughs> How can we feel music? Simply! Smart! <laughs> Welcome to Smart Signature, a postpaid reimagined experience. Be worry free. Make the most of your Smart Signature plan with these inclusions data allocation that fits your digital lifestyle. It also comes with unlimited 5G on Signature Plans Plus, unlimited all net calls, and unlimited all net texts. Be in control and live the signature lifestyle. Download the GigaLife app and easily manage your account. Check your usage, pay your bills, earn Giga points, and redeem rewards and more. Next up, learn more about your smart signature bill. Once your new billing statement becomes available, you will be notified through your registered and verified email address. This is a sample of the email showing your bill statement summary. This indicates the total amount that you need to pay, as well as your due date. To continue enjoying your postpaid inclusions, remember to settle your total bill on or before your due date. Get all the details of your bill in one place, the GigaLife app. In here, you can view and download a copy of your latest billing statements in just one tap. For inquiries, feel free to email us at signature at smart.com.ph. To learn more, you may visit smart.com.ph slash your signature. Sa pagtaas ng gastos, kahit nagtitipid, hindi pwedeng stop ang saya. Sa TNT Sulit Afford the Loads, gipit man, tuloy pa rin ang saya. Yes! May pantawid din para tuluyang ang pag-connect sa araw-araw. Lubri, tutanggap ako! Surf sa'yo 20 para tuloy ang kulitan at unliquentuhan. At all data 50 para tuloy ang todo sayaw at saya! Tuloy ang saya sa TNT Sulit Afford the Loads. Why stop at owning the world when you can go bigger? When simple dreams can become a universe of endless possibilities. When you can master your sound, expand your horizons. Because you wield the unlimited power of Smart Signature Plans Plus, the country's fastest mobile network. Now with 12 months only 5G, Netflix on us, and the all-around GigaLife app. It's simpler than ever to make your space greater. Simply your universe. How? Simply. Smart couple. Dear classmates, I congratulate us for having the power. Who would have thought one can major in social media Minor in Cartology, or Major in Mobile Legends, Minor in Inside Mada Bakery, or Major in TikTok, Minor in Anime Studies. Toto O and Cheese Smith, we really can do it all. And since we still have loads to discover, it is time to get Giga Powered with Smart Giga Power. Enjoy 20 gigabytes for all sites and apps for only 149 pesos, so we can jump from app to app. Passion to passion, chica to chica. Para more, more, more ang saya. Get giga powered na day. <clears throat> My apologies. Download the Giga Life app and choose Giga Power. Simply, smart a code. Ang tanong, paano nga ba mag-activate ng Giga Pay with Paymaya? 
It's easy as one, two, three. Dahil may three ways on how you can do it. Pasok magandang voiceover. Kuri ka dyan, Main. Talagang madali mag-activate ng GigaPay with PayMaya. Pero bago ang lahat, make sure you swipe right to GigaPay and tap to link or create a wallet. Now here's option one. You can link your existing PayMaya account sa GigaLife app. Just tap the Link PayMaya button, press Continue, enter your PayMaya details, and tap Proceed. Ganun kadali. At kung wala kang PayMaya, easy lang gumawa. That's option 2. In the same app, tap the Create PayMaya Account button. Just follow all the steps. And my smart GigaPay with PayMaya ka na. Our third option is to link your debit or credit card. Paano? Just tap on the Link Credit or Debit Card button. Enter your bank details and automatically activated na ang smart gigapay mo. It's that simple. Pili ka lang sa options 1, 2, and 3. Now, you can use smart gigapay with PayMaya to buy data or subscribe to promos in the GigaLife app. Right after, you can check your transaction history agad-agad. Anyway, yan ang mga sagot kung bakit gigapay with PayMaya. It's the smart way to pay. Back to you, Main. And there you have it. Kung activated na ang smart GigaPay with PayMaya mo, join me in saying, Simple, smart ako. Download the GigaLife app and activate GigaPay. Powerless with limited choices? Not anymore. Because with Smart's new power, All 99, I have the power to do what I want. With 8 gigabytes for all sites and apps, I have the power to play, to watch, to share, to stream, everything. Plus, Unitech Talk gives me the power to stay on my FYP. And Unitech's power to stay in touch. All that power for just 99 pesos. So it's Smart's new power. Welcome back. Good afternoon, everyone. You are listening to the, or watching the live and exclusive coverage of the World University Basketball Series coming to you live from the Yoyogi National Stadium in Shibuya, Japan. My name is Enzo Flo. And once again, this is brought to you by Smart Sports. We are in game six, day three of the WUBS featuring two undefeated teams fighting for the championship. Ateneo de Manila on one side, 
Tokai University on the other side. We, we see Ateneo de Manila leading 28-26 at the half right now. We see some numbers on screen. And what jumps out at me is rebounding. Ateneo now with 30 rebounds in total. While the Tokai University Seagulls with 25. So big rebounding edge for Ateneo right there. Also in the assists. 9-4 to four in favor of the Ateneans. Moving the ball around really, really well. And uh, doing a much better job of finishing and hitting their shots compared to last night against the uh, National Chungchi University Griffins. Ateneo, however, already with six turnovers so far in that first half. And that's certainly something that Coach Tao Baldwin, Coach Shadier Sportchaga, and the rest of the coaching staff has tried to emphasize at halftime for the Ateneans to take better care of that basketball so that they have a good chance of uh, not only keeping this lead, but extending it even more and uh, pocketing the first ever championship in the World University Basketball Series. Ateneo entering this game at 2-0 after that 86-point drubbing of a UPH Indonesia on day one and after uh, rallying from a double-digit deficit last night against uh, the NCCU Griffins of Chinese Taipei. Likewise, the Tokai University Seagulls, the bona fide home team in this matchup, already also entering this game at two wins and zero losses. They uh, defeated NCCU by 16 points on day one, and then they uh, had a very comfortable lopsided win over the UPH Eagles last night as well. Leading scorers right now for Ateneo, we have Gio Chu with 6 points, Fortsky Badriga with 5 points, and Josh Lazaro with 4, leading the way for the Blue Eagles. Meanwhile, for uh, the Tokai University, leading scorers so far are number 24, Hiroki Matsuzaki with 9 points, number 13, Ren Kanechka or Kanechika with 6 points, and the number four, Taichi Kodama, with four points. The guy to watch for the uh, Tokai University Seagulls, of course, is number 24, Hiroki Matsuzaki, a veteran of their under-18 team. Entering this game, he was averaging 25.5 points per game. So far, he's on track to score much less than that. But we'll see if uh, anything changes in the second half of action as you see some Athenians not dressed to play again remember the rule in the WUBS is each team can bring around 17 18 players but only 12 can actually dress and play in each game Ildefonso now to Padrigao here's Balung I think this is the same starting five that coach Tab had Start the game. We'll start the second half. And a good pass right there. Two-man game between Fortsky Patrigao and Kai Balungay. Balungay has been the leading scorer for the Athenians entering this game. Averaging 15 and a half, uh, or sorry, 18 points per game after the first two days of action. So far, based on the box scores I see, he only has uh, four points so far. Nishida, wow, Gio Chu. Good timing on the rejection, sending that basketball to the third row. We see the good spin here by Koyo Nishida, but Gio Chu says, no sorry, not in this house. Pull up three, Patayang Butike from Tokai University. Once again, that was Koyo Nishida with that corner pull up three as David Defonso waltzing in for two points. And a good start right now for Ateneo. What once was a two-point lead at the half is now a six-point lead for the Blue Eagles. 32-26. Nine minutes to go in the third period. Here comes Shimatani. The lefty still cannot find the mark. He has zero points so far for Toja University. Here comes Padrigao playing yo-yo with the basketball. Andrade. Off to Balunga. He kicks it out. Padrigao off the screen. Back to Balunga. He can hit it from long range. Pocket pass from Andrade. Balungay again. Same corner. Different result. No good this time. Good recovery on defense by Tokai University. Kanechik. And here comes Zhang Zhalian. Not again, says Gio Chu. But Tokai University able to secure the offensive board. That's going to be Shimatani with a put back uh, two points for Japan. So good interior defense being shown by Gio Chu. But 
Ateneo unable to complete the defensive stop. As we see a foul here, that's going to be on Koyo Nishida. As David Defonso rose up to take that three from the left quarter court. David Defonso already hitting 1-3 earlier in this game. And now he has a chance to get uh, more points on the board. As he will uh, troop to the line for three free throws. David Defonso, of course, the son of Danny I. The younger brother of Sean Ildefonso from NU. Misses his first free throw. David Defonso last night had very impressive uh, 14 points and 11 rebounds against the National Chung Chi University Griffins. David Defonso currently in his uh, third year for Ateneo makes a second free throw. He now has four points. And we'll see if he can uh, make it two out of three from the line. And he does exactly that. I did not jinx you, David Defonso. Nothing but net on Dave. As the Athenians reconstruct their six-point margin. 34 to 28, eight minutes to go. In the third quarter, again, we are coming to you live from the Yoyogi National Stadium in Shibuya, Tokyo, Japan. This is the live and exclusive coverage of the Sun Corella WUBS. Brought to you only by Smart Sports. Coming to you live from the Smart Sports Facebook page and YouTube channel. That was Zhang Zhenliang, the foreign student athlete of Toka University with that floater in the lane. Cutting the deficit down to just four points. As Ateneo is still in the lead. David Defonso rejects a screen from Gio Chu. The familiar one-step fadeaway. No good offensive board by Kai Balungay. But cannot complete the putback. And instead, Kai Balungay commits uh, what I would term as a silly foul right here. Frustration foul for Kai Balungay. Missing on the putback and just uh, being called for the... Uh, Foul right there against uh, Toha University. Shimatani. Here comes Nishida off a screen from Zhang Zhenliang. Nishida pull up from 17 feet. Good job by Ildefonso. Boxing out a much taller Zhang Zhenliang. Zhang Zhenliang 6 foot 7. Ildefonso about 6 foot 3. Good job by Ildefonso. Here comes Gio Chu. Short on that layup attempt. Picked up by Toha University. Kanechika. Back to Nishida. Calling out the play. Back to Kanechika. Pretty tall for a wingman. Kanechika stands six foot five. Padrigao about five foot eleven. But Padrigao with good hands. Poking it from behind. Completing the steal. Here comes Ildefonso. Spinning back to the middle. Pull up over Nishida. No good. Offensive rebound by Balungay will not count. Because there's a foul first that occurred. Under the basket, that's going to be on Ren Kanechika. That's going to be, I think, the second team foul now. I think that's the third personal foul on Kanechika, which is good news for Ateneo. And the second team foul now on the Toha University Seagulls here in the third quarter. Toha University trailing by four points. Toha, of course, one of the top teams in collegiate basketball in Japan. They've won the collegiate championship in Japan six times already. Last time was in 2020. Big three right there. BJ Andrade with his first bucket from Rainbow Country. And Trio up now by seven points. Oh, nobody boxing out. Koyo Nishida right there. Just waltzing and traipsing in for the putback too. And that was supposed to be uh, David Defonso's cover on the rebound right there. But he fails to box out Nishida, who completes the putback too for Toha University. Here comes Andrade. Offensive reset here from Padrigao. Step back three from the right wing is too strong. Too much sauce on the shot. And yet another foul here. Another silly foul on Kai Balungay. Another frustration foul. He was effectively boxed out right there. By number four, Taichi Kodama. And instead, again, another frustration foul. This time, Balungay sits with three fouls already. That is, I think, the first team foul for Ateneo. And the third, that's going to be huge. Because Balungay, as a six foot seven power forward, he's definitely going to be missed by Ateneo on the floor. 
Miss on the three by Kodama, picked up by Obasa on the rebound. Obasa, of course, the new foreign student athlete for Ateneo, 6'11", Nigerian. Filling in for Ansh Kwame, who's still recovering from his knee injury. Padrigao in the corner, Lazaro. Oh, no, bad handoff right there. Miscommunication from Lazaro and Padrigao. Nishida. Good recovery on defense by Kuhn and a rebound right now by Lazaro. Boot in Atlanta, because that was a really silly turnover coming from Josh and Padrigao. And speaking of silly turnovers, what is happening to Ateneo right now? Miscommunication on one side between Lazaro and Padrigao. We see that right here. It seems to be Groundhog Day for Coach Stab because almost the exact same thing happened after this defensive stop. Josh, uh, James Obasa, and I think BJ Andrade. Miscommunication on the opposite side on another handoff. Coach Tab definitely not happy with how his team has executed so far in the last two trips on offense. So we'll see. Kumakakabawi sila sa defense. Nagawa nila yun. Big steal poke from behind by Paul Garcia. Steal being completed by Joseph Obasa. Chris Kuhn, two man game with Obasa. Step back from right quarter court. Three is no good for Kuhn. And Kuhn has actually shot well. Well, he shot well in the first game. But last night, he was ice cold. Zero points for Chris Kuhn. And so far right now, still a big fat egg for Chris Kuhn in this game. As we see some guys enter right now for Toka University, Tayo Motoda back in the game. Same with Kotetsu uh, Horokawa. The backcourt change now for... Uh, for Coach Akira Rikukawa, I think Yosei Nishida also enters the game now for the Seagulls. Motoda. And that was Kenta Maeno, the undersized center for the Seagulls. Bobbling the basketball, but here's Yosei Nishida. Pull up three over, Andrade, no good. Rebound, easily collared by, J uh, by uh, Josh Lazaro, rather. Looking for the backdoor cut, no good. Good defense being shown by Tokai. Two-man game between Kuhn and Lazaro. Kuhn goes to inside to the drive. Bobbles the ball. Recovery right there on the loose ball by uh, Joseph Obasa. He had bad intentions, wanting to slam that ball down the throat of the Tokai defense. We see this drive by Kuhn, losing the handle. Picked up by Obasa. He gets fouled right there by Kanta Maeno. And Obasa will go to the line for two. I think Coach Akira Nikukawa will live with that. Because Joseph Obasa, not exactly the best free throw shooter for the Athenians. In fact, right now, he is currently 0 for 3. Make that 1 out of 4 in this game. Joseph Obasa with his third point of the basketball game. Last night, of course, he had a really, really big double double 17 points, 15 rebounds, 3 blocks for the 6 foot 11 Nigerian. Let's see if he can be perfect from the line. And he is perfect from the line. Now 2 of 4 for the line. 4 points now for Joseph Obasa as Ateneo erects a 39 to 32 lead with under 4 minutes to go in the third period. Here comes Motoda. Here comes the Seagulls. Good uh, handoffs at the perimeter right there. Motoda from the wing. And it's good. That is going to be number four. Oh, sorry, that's not Motoda. That's Taichi Kodama, rather. With a big three from the left quarter court. Japan now keeping within stri striking distance of Ateneo. Just trading by four. 39-35. And that perimeter defense has really been tested. It was tested last night by NCCU. And definitely being tested now by the Toka University Seagulls. Put up three from JC Fitalvero. Goes nowhere. Tipped by Garcia. Goes to the Toka University Seagulls instead. Here comes Yosei Nishida. Looking for a friend. Nishida. Bobbles the ball. Here's a steal. 2-1-1 break. Paul Garcia. Choosing to take it himself. No good. Here's Obasa with the offensive rebound. And Obasa doing a good job. Trailing on the break. Getting the offensive rebound. And we'll see what the call is. I think the call is going to be against Toka University. That shot by... Garcia goes nowhere as we see Obasa hustling towards the 
offensive rebound. And it's it is going to be on Toka University as we see Obasa go to the line again for two. First free throw for Obasa goes nowhere, so he's currently two out of five from the line. Needs to work on that stroke. The release on that free throw a little bit too low, I think. So that's certainly something he'll need to work on when they go back to the Philippines. Rattles out, so he goes 0 for 2 on that trip. After going a perfect 2 for 2 the previous trip to the line, Ateneo's lead does not change. Four points. A oh, good move right there. That was Cantamaeno with a great move. Great slip to the dunker spot. Obasa caught napping, closing out. And then Maeno with a good drive right there, blowing by Obasa. And I think that foul is going to be either on Kuhn or Obasa as uh, Kanta Maeno, six foot five center for Toha University, giving a good account of himself so far in this game. That was his first field goal, talking about Kanta Maeno, but it was a good field goal, good timing too. Cuts the deficit down to just two points for the Toha University Seagulls. We'll see if he can make the bonus. No good. Back rims it. Rebound goes to Joseph Obasa. And here come the Athenians on the break. Nursing a two-point lead. Chris Kuhn looking for a friend because he picked up the pass. Picked up his dribble right there. It's an offensive foul called on Joseph Obasa. Off that ball screen on Chris Kuhn. And look at him here, extends his left foot. And we saw that actually last night as well, also from Joseph Obasa. So he really needs to work on those uh, screening fundamentals if he wants to avoid being called for those illegal screens right there. Good pass inside. Obasa just stepping away from Maeno and Maeno making him pay. Four straight points for Kenta Maeno. As Toka University claws back from a seven-point deficit, tying it at 39 all. Here's Paul Garcia. Air balls it after shooting over Tayo Motora. Kurokawa off the pass. Harper. Acto Maeno. Here's Motora. No good on the three. Picked up by Chris Kuhn. Chris Kuhn on the break. Looking for Garcia. Garcia goes middle. Kicks it out. Here's Fetalvero. Passes up the three. Goes inside. Obasa bobbles it again. And yun sinasabi natin kanina pa. Medyo butterfingers tung si Joseph Obasa. Pocket pass. Lazaro kicks it out. Kuhn with a fake. Blowing by the defense. Pull up Jay. Finally, Chris Kuhn finds the bottom of the net. That is his first field goal since game one against Indonesia two nights ago. So the first two points on the board for Chris Kuhn this afternoon, giving Ateneo a two point lead 41 39. With a minute and change to go in the third. Oh, nice move on the pull-up by Taichi Kodama. Two dribbles to the left, creating some space. Pull-up two. Simple lang ang basketball, sabi ni Taichi Kodama. Tying the ball game up at 41. Paul Garcia now. Back to Kuhn. Here's Lazaro. Being tapped by Kodama. Watch the shot clock. Only five seconds to go. Lazaro pulls up from 18 feet. Josh Lazaro. And as his former coach, I am happy to see that Josh Lazaro has really been working on that pull-up jumper and it's paying dividends for him. Six points now for Josh Lazaro. Maeno, oh, bothered on that shot. One thing to drive past Obasa, but another thing to shoot over his outstretched arms. And uh, here we see Kanta Maeno just not able to do it successfully as... Uh, Obasa, that will count as a block for him as he did get a piece of that shot from Kanta Maeno. Obasa sits down. He has four points to his name after a relatively productive stint on the floor, although he did allow Maeno to score four points on him. Sean Kitevis dribbling past John Lawrence Harper Jr. Good defense by Harper, forcing Kitevis to the baseline, but a foul called on John Lawrence Harper Jr. And I don't know about that one. Oh, I think it was his right hand, yes. The referee saw his right hand holding on to Kitevis' hip. And that was an easy call. Toka University in the penalty now. And that was a silly foul on John Lawrence Harper Jr. 
Kitevis will go to the line to shoot two free throws and a chance to extend this lead with time not moving for the Athenians. Sean Kitevis, one of the heroes last night against NCCU. First free throw, back rims it. Last night, Kitevis had two points, both from the free throw line. Right now, Kitevis, one out of three from the strike. So we'll see if he can bounce back with this second free throw. Back rims it again. So Ketevis is now one out of four from the line. Lead still stands at two points with under eight seconds to go in the third quarter. Kurokawa to Harper. Mayano back to John Lawrence Harper Jr. Back rims with three. And Ateneo's two-point lead will stay at two points after both teams fight to a standstill in that third quarter. Both teams scoring 15 points. Ateneo de Manila still leading by two. 43-41 entering the fourth and final frame of this championship game in the World University Basketball Series. Brought to you by San Clarela and Smart Sports. You're coming to you live from the Yoyogi National Stadium in Shibuya District in Tokyo City, the capital of Japan. And we have the Ateneo Blue Eagles leading 43-41 to against the undefeated Toka University Seagulls. Ateneo leading by as many as 7 points, 39-32 in that third quarter. But the Seagulls clawing back, tying it at 39 before... Ateneo scoring uh, four points to make it 43-41. As we see, that nice three from Teichi Kodama. Here's Kantameno blowing by Joseph Obasa. Getting the layup plus the foul right there. There's Mayano again. And even with uh, the star big men of Toka University, Ren Kanechika and Zhang Zhenliang sitting on the bench, their backup big man, Kantameno, giving a really good account of himself. So far with four quick points to keep the Seagulls within striking distance of Ateneo. Again, this is a winner-take-all game between the Seagulls and the Blue Eagles. Both teams entering this game undefeated after two games. And because the format of this tournament is whoever has the best record at the end of the single round robin will be declared the champions. Basically, whoever wins this game will be the champions of the inaugural World University Basketball Series. As you see, Coach Tab Baldwin right there. Coach Tab and the rest of the Blue Eagles, of course, using this pocket tournament as one of their main preparation points for Season 85 of the UAAP, where Ateneo definitely wants to redeem itself and bounce back after falling short of their four-peat attempt in Season 84, of course, the Blue Eagles losing to the UP Fighting Maroons in three games in the finals of the UAEP Season 84. Good passing, but intercepted right there by Gio Chu. Here comes Paul Garcia on the break. Ay Balungay asking for it. Oh, nice move! Flick up and under move from Paul Garcia all the way from Salisbury University, Maryland. Finding a seam in the defense. I think he wanted to drop the pass off to Kai Balungai, but instead opted for the up and under shot. I don't mind at all. Four point lead. Good low look pass from Gab Gomez right there. And two quick, uh, two quick buckets right now for Ateneo to start the fourth quarter. Definitely just what they need. Slick looking up at another move as we see this nice poke from Garcia. Steal from Gomez. Look at this look away pass. Ganda naman pasa from Gomez to Ildefonso, who does not disappoint and completes the layup. And now the lead stands at 6. 47-41 in favor of Ateneo de Manila. Quick start to this fourth quarter. Timeout called by coach Akira Rikukawa instead. And we'll see what adjustments the Toka University Seagulls are going to make. We'll see if coach Rikukawa actually reinserts his uh, starting unit back in the game because his star players talking about Hi Hiroki Matsuzaki, Zhang Zhen Liang, Koyo Nishida, they're so far still sitting on the bench. So a good start for uh, the Athenians here. And we'll see how the Japanese will respond. 
Looks like Coach Rikukawa sticking to his supporting cast so far. The second unit still on the floor. Although we see their star shooter, number 16, Koyo Nishida, going back in for some uh, offensive firepower. That is Hiroki Matsuzaki. Their star scorer, who's averaging 25 and a half points, sitting on the bench with foul trouble. Hopefully, that's the only reason he's sitting on the bench. Kurokawa orchestrating the offense for the Black Shirts in a silly foul right there on Paul Garcia. And not sure if he wanted to poke the basketball or put some pressure on, on the high post, but uh, that's going to be a foul called on Garcia as Taichi Kodama was setting up the high post uh, handoff for Japan. Ateneo definitely with a size advantage here with a front line composed of 6'10 Gio Chiu and 6'7 Kai Balungay. Oh, good intentions right there between uh, Tayo Motoda and Kanta Maeno, but uh, bad execution. Hindi nagkaamuyan si Motoda at si Maeno there, no? Mukhang masyado na paagay yung pasa ni Motoda. Here comes Paul Garcia. Good pressure being shown here by Kurokawa. Almost a steal completed by Kotetsu Kurokawa. But instead, to the consternation of Akira Rikukawa, the coach, a foul is called on his backup point guard, Kotetsu Kurokawa. And Kurokawa doing a good job pressuring Paul Garcia, but a little over-eager in that sequence. First team foul now on Tokai University with under nine minutes to go in the fourth and final quarter. Kai Balungay on the handoff to Garcia. Garcia looking for a friend. Rejects a screen. Bobbles the ball again and completes the turnover. The bad pass from Paul Garcia behind the back. Dribble right there from Kurokawa. Off to Nishida. Misses the three. Pero teka lang. It's a loose ball foul called on Dave Ildefonso. Koyo Nishida overshooting the basketball from that corner. But a foul called on Dave Ildefonso. It's as we see the star player of Toka University. That's Hiroki Matsuzaki back in the game right now. I think he has around nine points already in this game. So he's the guy to watch for Tokai University. Shimatani, the starting point guard back in the game. Kanechika, wide open. Matsuzaki, not the guy to leave open, but he's short arm shot shot. Rebound picked up by Gab Gomez in transition. He's going to pick up his dribble, slow it down, give it to Gio Chu. Who's going to give it to Ildefonso? Looking for some seams in the defense. Where is he passing that basketball? He just passed it to Coach Tab Baldwin. But I think it was supposed to be Gab Gomez rotating to that side of the wing to get that kick out pass. So a turnover again on Ateneo. And the execution again has been quite uneven for the Blue Eagles in this game. But give credit where it's due. The Tokai defense has also been quite aggressive in applying pressure. Kenichika pull up through a pull up jumper over Balunga. No good. Picked up by Gio Chu. And here's Dave Defonso. Here's that rub screen from Gio Chu. Good tap right there by Shimatani. Easiest two points for, Ko for Koyo Nishida in this game. So Koyo Nishida off that Il Defonso turnover. Second straight turnover on Il Defonso. Resulting in a fast break. Uh, two points for uh, Koyo Nishida. Japan trimming that deficit down to four points. Pull up three. No good for Garcia. Picked up by Ildefonso. Back outside to grab Gomez. Gomez, two-man game. Kanichika showing. Here comes Gio Chu. Power dribble. Gets it back. Goes up strong. Medyo may halong buena si Gio Chu, but he'll take it. Eight points now for Gio. His first two points of the second half after scoring six in the first half. Good defense by Gab Gomez on Koyo Nishida. Nishida pulling up over Gomez. Trickling out is that shot. Picked up by Gio Chu. Here comes Gab Gomez. Gab Gomez with some productive minutes here for Ateneo. Skip pass to Garcia. Pulls up instead off the class. No good. Here comes David Defonso with the offensive rebound. Back outside. Garcia wide open all day from three. Trickles in for Paul Garcia. That's his first three 
of this game. Entering this match, Garcia was actually averaging three three-pointers per game. But that is triple number one for the Filipino-American as Ateneo now has a nine-point lead. The biggest of the game. Good backdoor play for Toka University. May, may fall pa atang tinawag doon. That's going to be Koyo Nishida off a good pass. The good pass, I think, coming from Hiroki Matsuzaki. Oh, no. I stand corrected. I think the good pass may have actually come from uh, Kanta Maeno in that sequence. But nonetheless... Good backdoor play, good execution, good finish by uh, Koyo Nishida, who's been one of the bright spots for coach Akira Rikukawa in this game. Koyo Nishida, one of the younger brothers, if I'm mistaken, of uh, Yudai Nishida, one of the star shooters for Japan's men's national team. A chance to complete a three-point play. No good. Sorry for jinxing you. Koyo Nishida. Defensive rebound picked up by Gio Chu. Here comes Sean Kitevis. Inside. Three-man game. Here's Balungay. Cross-court pass. Ildefonso from three is good. Dave Ildefonso. His second triple of the game. Dave Ildefonso now with 10 points for the Ateneo Blue Eagles. Good kick-out pass right there by Kai Balungay. Toka University late on the closeout. Oh, good-looking step back from Matsuzaki. Just could not knock it down. Rebound again from Gio Chu. Chu has a bucket load of rebounds already for Ateneo. Il Defonso calling the screen. Rejects it. Skip pass to Padrigal from long distance. No good. Rebounded by Matsuzaki. And here comes the uh, Tokyo uh, Toka University Seagulls. First double-digit leader of the game we're seeing now, but it's going to be a foul on Gio Chu as the Chinese center Zhang Zhenliang was setting up down low against him. Medyo napayungan ni Gio Chu and he was called for a foul. I think that's actually number four already on Gio Chu. So Chu with his fourth foul and already the fourth team foul on Ateneo. That could be, that could be something if Ateneo enters the penalty very early. That could be a good sign for Toka University. Pero sabi ni Kai Balungay, not here, not inside this house. Rejects the layup from Koyo Nishida. Good recovery on defense by Kai Balungay in that sequence as the bounce pass from Sean Kitevis. We see this good-looking rejection. You see the spring on Kai Balungay in that sequence. And he's going to be a factory of YouTube highlights for Ateneo this coming season. In season 85 of the UAAP. Obasa. Two-man game with uh, Padrigao, top of the key. Padrigao rejecting, but spinning back towards the screen. Good lift here by Kitevis. Rejects it back to Padrigao. Wide open three. No good. Well run play for Ateneo. Just could not knock it down. It's going to be a foul here. This will probably be either on Zhang Zhenliang or on Hiroki Matsuzaki. We'll see. And the foul is going to be on Matsuzaki right there. That's going to be an over the back as he was fighting for the rebound against Kai Balungay. Kai Balungay with superior position in the paint. And that's going to be the second team foul now on Tokai University. Now we mentioned that uh, Ateneo's four team fouls could, could be a ticket for Tokai to claw back in this game. But we'll see how that develops. Good pass from Padrigal to Ildefonso. Ildefonso shot nothing but fiberglass in that sequence. Missing completely. Kanechiko warding off. Not called for any foul. But the ball does not lie, my friend. And uh, nothing but air on that pull-up three from Ren Kanechika. After he got away with a push on Josh Lazaro. So the ball goes back. To Ateneo. Here comes Padrigao. Ateneo nursing a 10-point lead. Under four or under five minutes to go in this game. Luis goes looking to be in good shape to get win number three and possibly pocket the first ever WUBS championship. Bad pass right there from Ildefonso. Telegraphed well by Zhang Zhenliang. Comes up with a steal. Here come the Seagulls. Two-man game between Zhang and Nishida. Nishida up and under move. I thought he might have been fouled, but no call by the referee. 
Kitevis going. Open lane. Ops to kick it out. Padrigao. Il Defonso wide open. In and out. This time it's going to be a foul because two guys are actually pushing Joseph Obasa out of rebounding position. That's going to be that's going to be a number 10, Zhang Zhenliang, right there. And if I'm being completely honest, I think Joseph Obasa actually might have uh, gone, gotten away with a bit of gamesmanship in that sequence. But no matter, we'll take it. Atene will take it. They get a repossession right here with 14 seconds on the shot clock and a chance to uh, build on this 10 point lead. Lazaro gets the inbounds. Looking for his point guard. Hands it off to Padriga. Back to Lazaro. Ildefonso, good passing, good shot for a greater shot. Passing up the three was Ildefonso because his cousin. B.J. Andrade was wide open in the corner for three. Three-pointer number two for B.J. Andrade. Don't look now, but the Athenians are up by 13 points. 58 to 45, under four minutes left in the sixth and final game of the World University Basketball Series. Coming to you live from the Yoyogi National Stadium in Shibuya District in Tokyo, Japan. This is Enzo Floho. With a live and exclusive coverage of Smart Sports of the WUBS being streamed on the official Smart Sports Facebook page and the official Smart Sports YouTube channel. Good kick out right here by Ildefonso. And then the big three from Paul Garcia trickling in right there. Paul Garcia already with eight points. We see this nice skip pass from Kai Balungay. And uh, that was David Defonso's second three of the ball game. Dave with 10 points right now for the Ateneo Blue Eagles. Here's that good passing by Ateneo. Good shot for a better shot. Lazaro to Il Defonso to Andrade. Credit Andrade for the three. Credit Il Defonso for the assist. And I would credit Josh Lazaro for the hockey assist right there. Apparently 12 points to pala itong si Dave Il Defonso. So uh, I think my math has been wrong a little bit. So 12 points already for Dave Defonso to lead. I think lead all scorers in this game. It's been a very low scoring game. As you can see, 58 to 45 with under four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. A very defensive, uh, defensively uh, dictated game for both teams right here. But so far it's Ateneo who's been able to get some good shots in and a miss. From point blank range by Hiroki Matsuzaki, but good hustle by Ren Kanechika. Fighting for that rebound. Good eye in the sky. Gandang backdoor play. Hindi lang ma finish ni Hiroki Matsuzaki, but the last touch will be on Josh Lazaro. As Ren Kanechika fought him for the offensive rebound there. Matsuzaki shooting over Andrade. Still no goal. So after a hot start, itong si Matsuzaki has really gone cold. Wheeling and dealing, no go in the paint for Padrigao, but Obasa was there to clean up the miss. And a foul on Kanechika. Way short on that teardrop from uh, Fordski Padrigao, but Obasa just carving a lot of space in the middle. And that's one of the things you want to see from your big men. No? Modern big men are asked to rebound, protect the rim, set good screens. Go on those rim runs, but they're also asked to carve some space when their teammates are driving downhill. And that's what Obasa did in that sequence. And uh, he put himself in a good position to get that miss from Padrigao. Draw the foul from Toka University and score from the line. So good job for uh, the 6'11 Nigerian center for Ateneo, Joseph Obasa. I think he's now 4 out of 8 from the free throw line and this lead that was just two points entering the fourth quarter is now a big 15 point lead for Ateneo that's going to be a foul on Idefonso I think he did a good job blocking that shot but I think they're going to call him for contact down below actually there wasn't much contact right there but he's still going to be called for that foul. So Toka University is going to be 
on the line for two. That's going to be Koyo Nishida on the line for two. And Ateneo now in the penalty with three minutes to go. Tokai University has gone cold. Only two points so far in fourth quarter. Oh, sorry, four points so far in the fourth quarter. Make that five points after that free throw from Koyo Nishida. Remember that uh, the Seagulls were trading 43-41 entering the fourth quarter. But the Filipinos have outscored them 17-6 to so far. To kind of break this game wide open, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. And this is kind of like what happened last night as well. When Ateneo outscored NCCU big time in the fourth. But don't look now. Here come the Seagulls. A big... Uh, Defensive stop right there, leading to that easy two from Hiroki Matsuzaki. This press giving some problems. And another turnover from Josh Lazaro leading to... Not a layup, but a, a foul being called on Atenea. This lightning, quick, high-intensity pressure defense by Toka University paying immediate dividends. Forcing two straight turnovers back-to-back -back from Josh Lazaro. Resulting in the easy layup for Hiroki Matsuzaki in the previous sequence. And now it's going to be two free throws, I think, for Ren Kanichika. After this timeout called by Coach Tab Baldwin of the Ateneo Blue Eagles, who are still on top, leading 60-49 to against the Seagulls. Again, this... Here we have Ren Kanichika. Ren Kanichika on the line for two. Misses the first. Kanichika now on the line again for the second of his uh, free throws. The chance to trim this down to just 10 points. Kanichika is good on his second free throw. Lead of Ateneo down to just 10. Padrigao to Lazaro. Back to Padriga. Inside to Lazaro. Good passing so far by Ateneo. But where is it going to be the shot? Going to come from? It's going to come from Fortsky, Padrigao. Fortsky with his second triple of the game. It's 63-50 to 50 now. Booming three after some good passes from Ateneo in that uh, sequence. And a big steal right here from Ildefonso. Back to Padrigao. He's not going to shoot from that far, definitely. Padrigao now against Shimatani. Looking for the ball screen from Josh Lazar. Two-man game. Going strong. High off the glass. No good, but Josh Lazaro with a putback for Ateneo. Eight points now for uh, Josh Lazaro. As Ateneo reconstructs their 15-point lead, 65-50, to 50, as we see. A sweet-looking three from none other than number 24, Hiroki Matsuzaki of Tokai University. Lead is down to a dozen. Oh, He wants to break Shimatani's ankles talking about Fortsky Padrigao. Almost did in that sequence. Here's Ildefonso. Rejecting the screen. Chu offers the screen again. Two-man game. Pull up three. No good. Maybe not the best shot right there for David Ildefonso. But with a 12-point lead and only a minute and 10 to go, Atene is looking to be in really good shape up until that foul on the three-point shooter by David Defonso. It's going to be Koyo Nishida. Late closeout right there after the skip pass. 
I think from Shimatani going to Koyo Nishida. And Koyo Nishida will troop to the line for three free throws as uh, Toha University tries to uh, mount a sizable comeback here, down by a dozen points. Minute and nine to go. Koyo Nishida makes good on his first free throw. Nishida, maybe the one of the you know top scorers for this Seagull squad. And tonight he's really played like one. Two out of two from the stripe so far. Koyo Nishida. He's been one of the most aggressive guys on offense for this Tokai University Seagulls team. Nishida trims it down to single digits. 65-56. And mathematically, the Athenians are not out of the woods yet. Lazaro. Oh, no foul called right there. I think they got away with one talking about the Seagulls. But Padrigao's hustle results in a defensive stop for Ateneo. Here's that swipe. From Koyo Nishida, no call by the ref, but here's that telegraph pass by Shimatani. Good job by Padrigao on the deflection. Last touch on the Seagulls. At least I think, based on that replay, I think Coach Akira Rikukawa is still negotiating with the officials. But I think that negotiation has gone nowhere because Ateneo has possession of the basketball. BJ Andrade back to Padrigal. Good pressure defense being shown right here. It's eight second violation on Ateneo and a miscommunication right there. I think between the bench and Fortsky, they didn't know or they weren't aware that they only had a few seconds to go. I think they felt like because the because possession changed after that the turnover by Josh Lazaro that the shot clock should have reset. And I, I kind of agree. That it should have reset. So I think that was uh, that was uh, an error by the officials in this particular sequence. Nonetheless, Toka University sues for time. Coach Akira Rikokawa will likely drop uh, a play for a three-point shot in this next sequence to try and cut this uh, lead down to just a two-possession game for for Ateneo. But the odds definitely stacked against. Tokai University here. Nine point deficit, 50.5 seconds to go. It's going to be very interesting to see. Oh, wait a minute. They actually added two seconds to the clock. Okay, so this is a bit of a strange situation. Because after the turnover by Ateneo, they did not reset the shot clock. They did not reset the backcourt clock as well, resulting in that turnover. From Ateneo. Instead, they added two seconds to the game clock right here. An interesting turn of events right here at the Yoyogi National Stadium in uh, Shibuya, Tokyo, Japan. So the window just got a little bit bigger here for uh, Hiroki Matsuzaki and his fellow Seagulls as Tokai University tries to uh, mount. A huge rally, nothing short of a minor miracle, to be honest, for the Seagulls to overhaul this nine-point deficit with under 53 seconds to go. We'll see how things go. Game will resume with 52.5 seconds to go on the game clock. And here comes Kanichika against Gio Chu, picking up his dribble. Matsuzaki, almost a steal by Kitevis. Kitevis in there for defensive purposes. Good defense by Kitevis, forcing Matsuzaki to a bad shot. Offensive rebound, however, by Zhang Zhenliang. Josh Lazaro failing to box him out. And Zhang Zhenliang with the offensive rebound. Josh Lazaro will be called for the foul. And the six foot seven Chinese center, Zhang Zhenliang, will uh, go to the free throw line and try to hit two free throws. Now remember, the winner of this ball game will be crowned the inaugural WUBS champions. 
the World University Basketball Series is the first ever edition of the WUBS, and they actually have uh, big plans for the coming years. They want to invite more countries, more schools to take part in the WUBS. As we see Zhang Zhenliang misfire on the front end of his free throws. Zhang and the rest of the Seagulls are staring at a nine-point deficit with 40 ticks to go in this game. Second free throw is good for Zhang Zhenliang, so the lead is down to, two, to eight points. But it's still a three-possession game in favor of the Athenians. But watch out, because the last few times down the floor, they haven't been able to cross the half-court line, talking about Ateneo, because of this really tight pressure defense being shown by the Seagulls. And again, another turnover being forced by Tokai Matsuzaki from three, fouled by Gio Chu. And here we go. We're not done yet, folks. We are not done here at the Yoyogi National Stadium. Coach Tab is beside himself and he can't believe what he is seeing. His wards have been absolutely unsuccessful in their efforts to cross the half-court line, the last handful of trips down the court. And they've been giving up some silly fouls, resulting in these free throws for Tokai University. Matsuzaki hitting the first free throw, misfiring on the second. And he's going to try and hit the third free throw to try and make this a two-possession game. Ateneo is still up by seven. But I'm not sure about you guys. It seems like that, that six-point lead down from seven seems, seems like this six-point lead might not even be a big enough cushion the way Pokai has been defending in the last uh, minute of this game. And Coach Tab Baldwin is not going to be a happy man in this, in this huddle. Kita kita mo sa body language si Coach Tab that he is not delighted at how his guards have tried to solve this full court pressure defense puzzle being implemented and uh, deployed by Tokai University. And by my count, that has been, I think, three straight turnovers on Ateneo. Maybe even four, counting that uh, shot clock, uh, that backcourt uh, violation of Fortsky. Those were two turnovers on Josh Lazaro. That backcourt violation uh, on Fortsky, and then that uh, turnover on BJ Andrade in the sideline. So that's four turnovers, if my memory serves me well. So this six-point lead, it's a two-possession game technically, but again, much of Ateneo's destiny here is contingent on whether they can actually solve this defensive pressure by Toha University. Now, this is going to be the first time they're actually going to be able to uh, set a play in their own front court, talking about Ateneo, and that's because they sued for time and they've chosen to inbound the basketball here from the sideline in their own front court. But the downside of this decision is they only have 14 seconds on their shot clock. So we'll see where this goes. I'm sure Coach Tab is hoping that they can add to this six-point cushion. Balungay, quick double team. That's going to be a foul on Matsuzaki. Number 24, Hiroki Matsuzaki. That's going to be the fourth foul on Matsuzaki, the star player for the Tokai University Seagulls. As we see a pair of fresh legs coming in, it's going to be Paul Garcia coming in now in place of Fortsky Padrigao. As we see Kai Balungay on the stripe. Balungay has had a relatively quiet afternoon. He's, he came in averaging 18 points per game. By my count, he only has four points in this game. Missing that free throw. But he's had a very good tournament talking about this six foot seven Filipino American. And it's going to be fun seeing him go up against the other athletic forwards of the other teams in the UAAP. Talking about Zave Lucero, Michael Phillips. It's going to be pretty... Pretty high-level competition as Balungay 
makes his second free throw. Now it's five points in the game. Zhang Zhenliang steps out. Coach Rikukawa opting for more speed for the Seagulls. We see Shimatani just throwing it up there. Alahoy in a layup from Shimatani goes nowhere. Picked up here by Andrade. It will probably be fouled. Good pass right there. Balungay opting to just pass it out to Kitevis. Shot clock is no longer on because we only have 10 seconds to go in this game. Matsuzaki gives up the foul. Kitevis goes to the line for two. And that's going to be Matsuzaki fouling out of this ball game. And that is probably going to be all she wrote. As uh, Taichi Kodama enters the game, Hiroki Matsuzaki fouls out. But a good showing for him and for the Toka University Seagulls. They just fall short of upsetting Ateneo here. Sean Kitevis on the line for two free throws. Kitevis already with one point in this game. First free throw is good for Sean Kitevis. Kitevis, one of the uh, utility guys, one of the role players for this Ateneo team. Giving a good account of himself throughout the entire tournament. Playing in all three games. He's got three points to his name. Talking about Sean Kitevis. It's a nine point lead for Ateneo. And Ateneo will win this game against Tokai University. The final score is going to be 68 to 59. Ateneo with a big win, scoring 25 points in that fourth quarter. 25 points, rather, in that fourth quarter to win by 9 points, 68 59. And the Ateneo Demonina Blue Eagles are your WUBS first ever inaugural WUBS World University Basketball Series champions. Ateneo sweeping the competition, beating the UPH Eagles on day one, beating the NCCU Griffins on day two, and bringing home the bacon with this big nine point win over the home team, the Tokai University Seagulls on day three Toka University will uh, have to be content bringing home uh, second place they did have a good showing here in front of their own home crowd but the Athenians coming out on top certainly fewer jitters this time around compared to last night when Ateneo had to rally from an 11 point deficit this time around Ateneo leading for most of the game especially in the second and third quarters and staving off that last ditch rally by Toka University as Ateneo here doing really really well the Athenians bringing home uh, a rare championship trophy in this calendar year to the Philippines uh, obviously so many challenges for uh, Philippine basketball so far but Ateneo de Manila Really flying the flag high and proud here in uh, Shibuya, Tokyo, Japan. Carrying the colors of uh, the blue and white and the country. And bringing home uh, their first championship since winning in season 83. And this will serve them in good stead as they continue their preparations for season 85, the UAAP. As we see Gio Chu right here handing out the souvenirs that they're going to give to their counterparts from Tokai University. David Defonso leading all scorers here with 12 points. Followed by, I think, Gio Chu with 8 points. Paul Garcia also with 8 points. Joseph Obasa with 6. Portsky Patrigao also with 8 points. Josh Lazaro as well with 8 points. We'll have to wait for the official final box scores. But based on my own manual count, it's, uh, yeah, it's David Defonso leading all scorers with 12, followed by uh, BJ Andrade, Gio Chu, Josh Lazaro, Portsky Badrigao, and Paul Garcia, each with five points, uh, with eight points, rather. Joseph Obasa with six, Kai Balungay with five, Ton Ketevis with three points, and Chris Kuhn with two points. Or the Athenians. 
pretty interesting souvenir from Ateneo right there, like a small flag with the Ateneo seal as we have our, uh, I think, our closing ceremonies here. And that last minute, last huddle being led by no less than Ansh Kwame. You see these highlights. First bucket of the game, courtesy of Hiroki Matsuzaki. Great looking shot of the pull up from the ball screen. Eye in the sky play for Kai Balungay right there. Good assist. I think that was coming from uh, David Defonso. Good defense turning into great offense right here for Toha University. That was Koyo Nishida with a nice fast break layup. Here's off a nice pass from BJ Andrade. Portski Badrigao banking a three from the corner. And here's Ray, Ren Kanichika hitting from top of the key beyond the arc as well. Lazar with a good pass here to the cutting. Obasa plus the foul. Obasa finishing with six points tonight. That was his only field goal. Kai Balungay pulls up. Turnaround shot. Sweet looking shot from Kai Balungay. Here's Padrigao. Doing his own version of a turnaround fadeaway is Fortsky Padrigao. Also giving a good account of himself. Good pass right here from Kitevis to the athletic Josh Lazaro. Going up strong, finishing with a reverse. Meanwhile, here were the Seagulls. Once again, Nishida missing, but here's Kanechika with a put back on the other end. Gab Gomez. Good pass right there to Gio Chu. Gab Gomez had him. Had some good uh, plays today. Gio Chu up and under. Missing that one, but getting his own miss. Not giving up on the play. Getting the putback. Gio Chu finishing with eight points. Here's a good steal from Kitevis. It's going to be a good drop pass for the easy two for Paul Garcia. Kai Balungay rejecting the three. Here comes a good pass from Padriga. Back to Balungay. Absorbing some contact and finishing in traffic was Kai Balungay. David Defonso finishing in traffic as well in this fast break layup. Credit to Gio Chi as well for carving some space in the paint. Nishida, Tukane Chika, good two man game between those two. Kurokawa with a kick out pass to number four, Taichi Kodama with a big three. This was way back in the third quarter when. Uh, the Seagulls were mounting a mini run. Kurokawa, good pass inside to Kanta Maeno. He had some bright spots in the third quarter as well, talking about Maeno. Lawrence Harper Jr. losing the basketball. And here's a good no-look pass from Gab Gomez. I got you, David Defonso, said Gab Gomez. Here's Dave, bobbling the basketball. An easy two coming in for Koyo Nishida again. As they were once again threatening, knocking on the door against Ateneo. Good kick out right there. And here's a three that's going to trickle in for Paul Garcia. That was his only three of the game. Talking about Garcia. Balungay, nice skip pass. In Defonso will find the bottom of the net here with this three-pointer. Three-point shooting clicking for Ateneo late in this game. And speaking of three-point shooting, that's a good three from Fortsky Padrigao. That was his second three of the game. And here he is kissing it off the glass. No good, but there's Lazaro with the put back. Josh Lazaro giving a good account of himself with eight points. Here's Matsuzaki, and his stroke is so pure, so sweet, and so sure. Hiroki Matsuzaki, one of the best players from Tokai University, as we see the Athenians posing with some fans right here. I wonder where those fans got those Team Ateneo shirts. I'm not sure if the Team Ateneo shirts are actually being sold in Japan. That would be pretty interesting if that were happening. As we see some stats right here. Ateneo, of course, winning by 9 points, 68 to 59. Shooting relatively well from a three-point range. By relatively, I mean they shot better than their opponents. Seven threes for Ateneo this afternoon. Ateneo shot poorly from the free throw line, though. 11 out of 23. 
but they offset that by out rebounding Toka University 57 to 44. Ateneo had 15 turnovers, which is actually fewer than their average of 22 turnovers. So that's a big check for Ateneo, and Ateneo plus five in assists as well. 16 against the 11 assists of the Toka University Seagulls. The Seagulls just not shooting really well from the field at all. 19 out of 69 from the field was Toka University, only 27.5% from the field. On the other end of the floor, you have the Athenians shooting 25 out of 67 from the field. That's a 37% clip for the Athenians. So pretty good shooting, decent shooting, not good shooting, just decent shooting from the Athenians and very strong rebounding and minimizing their turnovers, all those ingredients which resulting in this big championship win for the Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles as, as they represent the Philippines here in the first ever World University Basketball Series. You see the team standings right here. Ateneo de Manila at the uh, zenith, at the very top, the peak of these standings. Three wins, no loss. Toka University finishing second with two wins. Their only defeat coming at the hands of Ateneo. National Chongqi University finishing third with one win in three games and then the Universitas Pelita Harapan from Indonesia finishing at third place after losing all three of their games. Okay, National Guard? Sa pagtaas ng gastos, kahit nagtitipid, hindi pwedeng stop ang saya. Sa TNT Sulit Afford the Loads, gipit man, tuloy pa rin ang saya. Yes! May pantawid din para tuloy ang pag-connect sa araw-araw. Salubri! -araw. Tutanggap ako! Search sa'yo 20 para tuloy ang kulitan at ang likwentuhan. At all data 50 para tuloy ang todo sayaw at saya. Tuloy ang saya sa TNT Sulit Afford the Loads. Feeling powerless with limited choices? 